Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today is a bit of a special day. Generally when you're making a game there's always trade-offs. If you want to make your game consume less memory, you have to um, do a little bit more work on the CPU side. But there is one particular thing that when it comes to surfaces, most people probably want to do most of the time. So I have an object, this is an object that lives in the game world. I am going to go into this object's create event and I'm going to say surface is going to equal surface create. And we're gonna give this an arbitrarily big size. Um, the max size you can make a Surface in Game Maker is 16384 by 16384. Uh, that might be a bit overkill for me. I'm gonna make it 10,000 by 10,000. This is a big surface. And uh, Surfaces in Game Maker is a bit of an optimization that Game Maker does behind the scenes. Uh, this will not actually be allocated until you try to do something with it. So uh, surface set target. Uh, we can set the target to the surface, surface reset target when we're done, and we can just draw clear. And we can, uh, we can fill the surface with, uh, with black pixels. So it's going to be allocated, and it's going to be filled with, uh, filled with black pixels. It's pretty simple. We don't actually need to draw the surface for today. It just needs to exist so that we can see its impact on my, on my computer as we do this. So, if you've been following along the last few videos, you should have a rough idea of how much space inside inside the computer this is going to take up. So the amount of space that a surface takes up is going to be the number of pixels times four bytes per pixel, uh, because each pixel is composed of a red, green, blue, and alpha byte. And that's going to be four bytes per pixel. So 10,000 times 10, times 10,000 is going to be 100 million. And if you multiply that by four, you're going to get uh, 400 million bytes that the surface should take up. That's a lot of memory. So this is going to live in, instead of my computer's random access memory, uh, this is actually going to live in my in my GPU memory because Game Maker does store surfaces in video memory. They don't live in normal RAM, um, notwithstanding some special things that you, might, that you might want to do with them, such as transferring them to a buffer like I did in the last video. But uh, surfaces live in, in GPU memory in Game Maker. And if I were to run the game, uh, right now I'm sitting at 1.4 gigabytes of uh, dedicated GPU memory out of three. Um, and 0.4 gigabytes of um, shared GPU memory out of 16. But uh, since uh, this is relatively small and I have space for it, this should go into my dedicated GPU memory, uh, which is faster to access. Um, and this should jump up to about, um, about 1.8 gigabytes of GPU memory when I run the game and allocate the surface. And we're going to see that that is actually not what happens. We went from 1.4 gigabytes to about 2.1. And the reason for that is that not only does Game Maker, uh, with its with its surface, when it allocates a surface, not only does Game Maker uh, have four bytes per pixel uh, that are composing the surface, but it also has a 32-bit depth buffer to go with every uh, every pixel in the uh, surface. And this is um, this is useful in 3D if you do things with 3D, which I know a lot of you do. Uh, the depth buffer is very special to you, and it is very important that it is that it does its job correctly, otherwise you get all kinds of bonkers effects. But uh, most of the time when you're doing surfaces in Game Maker, just as a as general use uh, in 2D Game Maker, you really don't need that. You really don't need those extra uh, four bytes per pixel of the depth buffer, those extra 32 bits of the depth buffer. And it would be really nice if you could turn that off. If you don't ever do anything with 3D, if you don't ever do things um, GPU set Z, write enabler, that kind of thing. And as it turns out, uh, there actually is a function that you can do, that you can use that with. There is surface uh, set, not surface set, but surface depth disable. And you can use the surface depth disable function, and this will disable creating the depth buffer when it comes to allocating a surface. So if you set this to true and run the game again, by the way, um, in Windows Task Manager, it's uh, 1.4 gigabytes of video memory that I was at before I ran the game, and 2.1 gigabytes now is only a spread of 0.7 instead of 0.8. Um, long story short, uh, one, one megabyte in computer memory is a little bit more than one million bytes, and that coupled with the fact that uh, this number is only being shown to, uh, to one decimal place to two significant digits means that uh, we're going to be seeing a little bit of uh, imprecision here in this dedicated GPU memory meter. There are other programs that you can use that will give you a, a more detailed breakdown of, of your uh, video memory usage, but for this, uh, for this demonstration, it's good enough. So if I were to, uh, if I were to close that 
And if I were to run surface depth disable before creating and doing anything with the surface, so before I allocate the surface, uh, we are going to see that I'm back down to 1.3 here, see? Um, we're going to see that instead of going up to 2.1, I'm only going to be going up as, as expected uh, to about 1.7 gigabytes of video memory. And again, a little bit of imprecision in this measurement, but it's, uh, we can see we're using about half of the memory for the surface uh, that we otherwise would be. And it also, I believe, started a little bit faster too because it didn't have to, like, um, it didn't have to ask the operating system for, for twice as much memory and that, that was just faster. So this is obviously a very dramatic example. Creating a surface that's a 10,000 by 10,000 is something that you're probably not going to be doing very often in 2D or in 3D. But in a more, uh, in a more down to earth example, if you had something like a, uh, let's see a 500 by 500 surface, uh, that's 250,000 pixels. Uh, if you multiply that by four, that's about 1 million bytes per, um, per surface that is of size 500 by 500 that you would expect to have. And if you had the, uh, the depth buffer turned on, that would be another, another 1 million bytes per surface. And that itself isn't a lot, but if you have, um, say, 100 of those that you're using for various things, ping-ponging between surface for various things for whatever reason, um, that is going to be a lot of memory all of a sudden that you could just re remove from your game by calling surface depth disable before you create the surfaces. Um, especially if you're working on a mobile device. Mobile devices are typically a little bit more limited, especially when it comes to, um, well, one, a lot of mobile phones, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, actually share all of their memory between regular computer random access memory and video memory, instead of having dedicated GPU memory as you would have on a desktop. And also just phones are limited by battery power. And if you can trim back your mobile game in any way possible, uh, your players will definitely appreciate it. So if you, uh, if you generally most of the time want surface depth to be disabled, but maybe once in a while you do want to create a surface that's used for 3D, you can, of course, surface depth disable and set this to false. And this will bring back the depth buffer for a surface that you create. And you can just, when you're done with that, you can set it to true again, and you can disable it again once you've uh, created and allocated your 3D surface. I'm going to end it up here. Uh, this is not a complicated topic. This is just a quick thing that you could do that would generally be beneficial that I don't think most people know about. I will not have the code available for download in the description of the video today. Uh, this is just a couple lines of example code. I typically don't distribute code examples for things that are like this. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all the usual places. You can see some fun things like your name in the credits at the end of every video and about once a month I post a preview of my future plans, and if you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial, and one Let's Make a Game, which is currently a, a bullet hell game. So if you're interested in any of the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, feel free to subscribe. Let me know how much mileage you're able to get out of this, because I do know that some people do like to use a lot of surfaces. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.